Whether you're taking a small trip or doing a staycation, hitting the road is fun and August is National Traffic Awareness Month. St. Louis and the surrounding region has a lot of history when it comes to road travel. And joining me today is celebrity historian Rafi Andonian. Rafi, thank you. Of course. Great time to be here. I, Celebrating highways. I know. I mean, <laughs> who traffic. knew there was a National <laughs> Traffic Awareness Month? But it makes for a good segment on CDO SEL. Right. You so brought we'll my little it. toy cars here from my childhood, driving I around. I love it. I love it. And we know that highways literally are a means to an end. We use them to get around every single day. But why did interstate highways get built? Because President Eisenhower wanted to have a more efficient way to get around the country. Now, so for example, he wanted more efficiency in the roads, more speed, less, uh, more safety, because he thought there were too many wrecks, and less traffic, actually. They thought there were too much traffic, believe it or not. And what's interesting about that is that it was actually primarily economic, not defense, the way you think. Now, defense played a role because he wanted an easy way to evacuate large cities. But we often think of, you know, taking a plane and landing it on the interstate highway. That's what it's designed for because we've seen it happen a few times in emergency situations. But that's actually not what it's designed for. It's primarily economics and evacuation. What's interesting is it's not the first time that you have a federal funding for a highway. It happened 200 years ago. Uh, there was actually fund, federal funding for highways, believe it or not. And then prior to Eisenhower, you had Woodrow Wilson, who kind of puts into place some framework for the interstate. And then Franklin Roosevelt, who actually creates and passes a law that shows sort of a grid for getting across the country, both east, west, and north, south. But they don't end up funding it, which is part of the problem. But you know what's funny about that? They thought it would be toll roads only. And they, but they thought the tolls would not cover it, so they switched to a free system. So that's what Eisenhower is leaning on and having been in Germany seeing the Audubon system when he comes here to do that. That is amazing. Yep. The history of the highway. That's I love right. that. That's now, right. speaking of the highway, I mean, we know about Route 66, the good old Mother Road. How did it get its nickname? <laughs> the Mother Road gets it because there's so much popular cultural references. So let's think about it. How about get your kicks? On oh, Route 66. 66. That's Life King. is a highway. That's right. That's right. I'm going to. So okay. Nat King Cole does their kicks on Route 66. Okay. On it refers to us in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Now you go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri. Okay. So that's referring specifically to us here, right? Route 6 comes through here, connecting Chicago to LA, as Nat King Cole talks about. But it's in other pop culture references, too. In television in the 1960s, there's a TV show that ended, ends up being rerun for decades. How about, of course, Grapes of Wrath, with yeah. John Steinbeck refers to it as the Mother Road, and that's where it gets its name in the 1930s. So repeat references in pop culture make it this huge kind of thing. Now remember, it was, it was intentionally designed to go kind of from Chicago down over and then to L.A., unlike other federal roads that stuck up north. That's part of the reason it was so popular, because truckers liked the fact that it wasn't going so far north to hit all that nasty weather. So it came down south goes across the southern part of the Midwest and over to L.A. Now, it's also intentionally winding, if you ever follow it. The reason is, again, economics, because they want to connect as many little towns as they can to major metros, like Chicago, St. Louis, and L.A. along the way. Now, Oklahoma City, pretty huge at the time as well. So at the, what's going on is that that connectivity, however, that making it so popular, more diners, more gas stations, more stuff on there makes it what's so crowded and trafficy, which is why when Eisenhower comes in the 1950s, he looks at Route 66 and says, this is too much, he and then implements the interstate highway system. Wow. So they're actually, the stories are interconnected because Route 66 was, not, was too windy, too slow, too traffic, and too popular to continue the way that it was, hence the interstate highway system story. I did right. not know that. That's right. This is why you're the history buff. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Now, we've talked about Route 66. We talked about the mother road, the highways. What about the local highways here in Missouri and in Illinois? Well, Missouri sees all this, right? Look, we just talked about Nat King Cole referring to the song, right? Route 6 coming through here. And, of course, we are still an interstate hub here. So Missouri, in the early part of the 20th century, says, let's get Missouri out of the mud. Those are the terms that they <laughs> oh use. So they had these really rough roads. And they think, well, first let's start with connecting county seat to county seat with clean clear, easy road so that we're here at the sort of center of the country so that we can connect the country coming through Missouri. And it pays off later when you have Route 66 and the interstate highway. So that's what Missouri is thinking as being in sort of the middle of the transcontinental transportation, which it was with rivers and railroads prior to that. Yeah. So we want to continue that tradition. Now, in the case of Illinois, similar in the sense that they're kind of in the center of the country, true, but theirs is more a story about population boom because of Chicago. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have, unlike Missouri, as clean and centralized as a highway coordination system 
in the state until later. And so there were repeat efforts over and over to try to do that in Illinois so that they can kind of uh, organize themselves with a sudden population boom that happens in Chicago when the second time it booms in the middle part of the 20th century. And that's how Illinois connects, uh, uh, takes a bunch of different transportation systems, both waterways, highways, and so on, and connects into a Department of Transportation. Oh my gosh. I had no idea. <laughs> and this is why you're the expert. Rafi, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. And really celebrating a National Traffic Awareness Month. Rafi is our celebrity historian. And if you want to find him on YouTube, on Instagram, or even on his website, you can visit him at celebrityhistorian.com. You can follow him on Facebook, and he has some amazing videos on YouTube. So check it out. And Rafi, thank you. Of course. And I'm going to have Rascal Flats stuck in my it's head. It's a road. The rest of the <laughs> Don't road go anywhere in St. Louis. We'll be right back after this quick break.